Okay, so um, yeah, just just let you know. Twenty over the next twenty minutes or so, we're going to be talking about the network, about uh, job templates, and about adding images, documents, attachments. Just a bit of housekeeping, as I said, if you could just make sure your microphones are muted. Um, also. I am working from home like a lot of people nowadays, so if my broadband does cut out, uh, just bear with us, I'll reconnect as soon as I can. Uh, if you've got any questions, if you want to send them in the chat, you can either send them um, privately or, or to all. Uh, we'll try and get to them at the end of the webinar. Hopefully we'll, we'll have a few minutes uh, at the end. If there's any we don't get to, I'll drop you an email after the event. Likewise, if you want a copy of the slides or if you want the video after the event, let us know and we'll send, send it through to you. Okay, so I think we've got, we've got a good mix of, of companies on, on, the, on the webinar. We've got some customers, we've got some customers that have been with us a long time, some newer customers and some prospects as well. Um, for those of you who don't know who OCAP is, OCAP is actually a, a B2B connected workforce management platform. And it's different in that it applies social and market networking technology to a real business need. The need to communicate and collaborate when working with your employees who are often at different locations, and I guess now more than ever, when working with subcontractors and when working with customers. So, we're helping the most forward-looking and dynamic companies increase transparency, reduce duplication, costs and errors, increase efficiency, and ultimately we're seeing customers on the platform make a significant contribution to bottom line profits. With OCAPI, you can connect to your employees, your customers and subcontractors. You can send and receive jobs. You can see the status of those jobs as they're updated in real time by either your engineers or your subcontractors. Once the job's complete, you can raise the invoice at the touch of a button. Um, therefore, make sure your invoices get out quicker and get paid quicker, ultimately. And it's the first couple of points that we're going to be talking about. So the network connecting to customers and subcontractors, how you do your jobs, so the job templates, and the kind of information you can save on OCAPI. So the three things I'm going to talk about today, one is how to use the network, how to build your network on OCAPI, and, and what it means when you connect to customers and subcontractors. I'm going to be talking about the job templates. It's a relatively new feature. Um, so I think particularly some of our older customers uh, might not be aware that, it, that you can, that it's available, that you can create, you can edit your own uh, job templates. Uh, and obviously kind of new customers or, or customers that are thinking of join, joining OCAPI, uh, it'd be useful to, to you guys. Uh, and then finally, I'll be talking about adding files, images, signatures. Again, I think a lot of our customers pick up quite quickly that you can add, um, add them to jobs. What they might not know, or to what prospects might not know, is you can also save documents, images for your customers, for your subcontractors, and for your employees as well. So the first tip then, um, how to build your network on OCAPI. So as I said, OCAPI is unique and it's always been built around a connected network approach. So while other workforce management systems can work well internally, what we tend to see is they fall down when other companies are involved in the work. And in this day and age, companies don't work in isolation. Um, obviously, you all have customers. Um, companies outsource. They use subcontractors with specialist knowledge, uh, specialist equipment. And more and more companies are collaborating um, and being able to use that to compete with potentially bigger, bigger players in their industry. Uh, a Gartner research report recently said that by this year, I think almost half of all work will be done by engineers and technicians not directly employed by you. And this can cause issues. Um, we hear a lot from companies that come to OCAPI. Before using a network, there was duplication of information from their customer systems into their systems. 
um, between their systems and their subcontractor systems. Um, we hear about the hassle of providing reports and information to customers, um, particularly bigger companies um, and housing associations, councils, um, some facilities management. They're increasing, increasingly demanding more information, more complex information, and they want that information as soon as possible, often as soon as the job's complete. Some of the other benefits of a network approach, we hear about jobs not getting added onto the system um, because of emails getting missed, um, telephone calls in the heat of the moment, uh, information not being added, added on. We hear about mistakes, delays through duplication, um, and the hassle of having to copy information from say, your customer system into your system. So as I say, with OCAPI's Portal Plus network, you can connect to your customers and subcontractors. You can receive work from your customers or add work on their behalf, and you can assign that work to your employees or to your subcontractors. And the beauty of the network is that everyone involved in that work can see the latest status of the job, which means your customers don't have to chase you, you don't need to chase your employees or your subcontractors, and so on down the line. So how do you build your network on OCAPI? So to add a, add a customer, it's if you click the connections icon towards the top right of the screen, um, you can search for the customer or enter the customer details. That will send a, a connection request, um, which if they accept, then they an account gets created and in, independently from, from yours. That means they can add jobs and they can assign them to you, or you can add jobs on their behalf, which they can see. However, what they can't see is any of your other jobs. So jobs you're doing for other customers, they can't see it. That, that privacy is obviously still there. Likewise, if you assign a job to a subcontractor, your customer can't see who that subcontractor is. Obviously, you don't want to be kind of cut out, potentially cut out of the loop. So privacy is key. So to summarize some of the benefits of why you would connect to your customers, where well, it reduces duplication, copying information from your system, uh, their system into yours. It means less missed jobs, less chasing of emails and calls. It also means, I, like any kind of network, LinkedIn, Facebook, if you update your contact details, then your customer can see those, that information update straight away. Your subcontractors can see the latest information. Likewise, if your customers update their details, then you see straight away as well. So no more risk of invoices getting lost in the post, invoices, job sheets being sent to, to the, wrong, the wrong address or the wrong email address or physical address. And ultimately, it means you can provide the best customer service that, that companies now demand. Some other benefits of connecting to your customers, and I'll talk a bit more about this, the first point in a bit, but you can send uh, save and retrieve documents for your customer. So for example, contracts, insurance certificates, RAMs documents, for example. And it means all that information is in one place, it's close to hand, it's linked to your customer, so it's easier to find. You can add notes to your customer. You can use the reports to analyze customer's performance. So you often hear from management consultants they talk about the Pareto rule and 80% of your profits coming from 20% of your customers. So with OCAPI, you can run various reports on your different customers and see which ones are really adding to the business and potentially which ones aren't. You can also search for companies on the OCAPI network as well. Um, so if you are looking to grow, uh, you can find new customers, you can find subcontractors, and send invites and connect to them as well if they're open to, to connections. On the other side of the coin, the network, you can connect to your subcontractors as well. Uh, same principle, you click the connections icon towards the top right of the screen, enter subcontractors details, send an invite. They'll be notified that you want to connect um, like 
connecting to a customer, they can only see the jobs that you've assigned to them. So they can't see jobs that you've assigned to other subcontractors or to employees. One important difference between subcontractors and customers, uh, customers you can send an invite but they don't necessarily have to connect or you don't necessarily have to even send an invite to a customer. With a subcontractor, if you send an invite to a subcontractor, they do have to accept that invitation before you can assign jobs to them. And the reason for that is obviously you don't want to be adding work onto the system, assigning it to a subcontractor, and they're not using their copy, they're not seeing the information, the job's not getting done. Um, you're having to then chase or your customers getting irate that the job's being missed. A very similar um, benefits from for connecting to subcontractors, obviously you can reduce duplication between your system and theirs. Um, no more missed jobs, so you don't have to send job sheets or emails to subcontractors, which they might miss. A lot less chasing. Um, you, you can see that the subcontractor's on site in the same way that you can see your employees are on site. You can see what the subcontractor's done. So it means less having to chase them uh, for, for information. And likewise, if they update their contact details, you can see that in real time. If you update your details, they can see in real time as well. So it really helps you to manage uh, manage your subcontractors. Likewise, you can add documents to a subcontractor. So, for example, contracts, uh, insurance certificates, um, any kind of certificates. You can keep notes for your subcontractors in the same way that you can for your customers. Um, and again, using the reports, you can analyze your subcontractors and see how they're performing and see how they're performing versus employees. So if you are looking to make that decision about either taking on your employees or subcontractors, you can run um, these various reports available, which you can use to analyze uh, which is the best, best route to take. Um, in the same way that you can raise invoices to your customers through a copy, your subcontractors can also raise invoices to you. Uh, you see those in the invoice uh, tab, invoices received. And you can also pay your subcontractors through a CAPI again in the same way that your customers can pay you. So if you don't have um, payment mechanisms or payment gateways, then you can use OCAPI's uh, payment gateway to pay, pay invoices. And in the same way, you can search for subcontractors. So if you are looking to expand, you are looking to take on subcontractors, you can search for, for subcontractors through OCAPI as well. Okay, so um, yeah, just a reminder, if you do have any questions, please send them in the chat and we'll try and get to them at the end of the webinar. Um, but yeah, moving on, the second tip that we want to talk about today is around creating job templates. This is, as I said, a relatively new feature on OCAPI. Um, previously, we created the templates manually for our customers, which obviously can take time, there's cost implication, and doing things manually also increases the, the risk of errors. So a couple of years ago, after feedback from customers, we started to develop the job template builder. Um, we're still kind of enhancing it, improving it, um, but that allows you to create and edit your own job templates. And we've seen a lot of companies get quite creative in how they use the templates, um, adding templates for different jobs or for different customers, adding templates for different reasons, such as holiday checks, COVID notifications, uh, for the furlough scheme, we saw a few templates set up last year. We're also seeing some quite complex check sheets being added, uh, including things like inventory checks, uh, gas electrical certificates. So how do you create a job template in OCAPI? So from the, the job dashboard, you've got the job options towards the top right of the screen. If you click that and then click job sheet templates, that takes you into the job template builder. You've got the option then to create a template from scratch. You can copy an existing template. So if you've already got a template on the system, you can use that as a base. 
And we've also started to add library templates, which you can use again as a base for creating your own templates. Uh, there's still the option you can purchase the configuration option, uh, in which case we'll use the template builder to create the, the templates for you. So once you're in the template builder, it's split into four key sections. So you have the, the header and footer, and there you can add like logos, a title, a subtitle, address, bank details. So you can really tailor the, the template, the job sheet to fit your branding, or as, as we see a lot of customers do to fit the branding of, of their own customers. Um, a lot of our customers do, do work for the likes of Network Rail, uh, facility, other facilities management companies, um, councils, housing associations, as I said. Some of them have their own templates already um, and they require that their subcontractors use that template. So by adding their logos, by tailoring the template, you can fit it into their, their specific requirements. So that's the first section, the header and the footer down at, at the bottom. You've also got options, uh, template options. So from there, you can change various settings such as when the alerts show on the job dashboard. So if the job's running late, you can change the timing. You can change what's shown on the final template. So which check sheets are shown. And you can change which information gets pulled into to your invoice. Um, automatically from, from the job when you raise an invoice from the job. You've got the main section, the job details section. So this bit is typically filled in either by your customer or by, by the office. That'll be things like the job description, customer contact details, uh, name, address, and kind of key information. And then the final stage you have the check sheets and this is what's typically filled out by your engineers on their mobile devices. You can have check sheets at various stages of the job. So you can have a, a check sheet as soon as, as your engineer goes into the job and typically this would be a risk risk assessment and um, obviously it, it can be anything that that you define in the in the template builder. You can have the have a check sheet in, in the work done stage of the job. Um, the default is four fields, labor, labor cost, materials, and materials cost. Um, but you can add any fields that you want in there. And we have various fields. Uh, you can choose from drop downs, you can choose from check boxes, uh, yes, no fields, uh, text fields, text labels, uh, text areas. Um, so it's very flexible in terms of what you can add on. And then you can have a final check sheet at the end. Again, it's optional and that has, or well, that's typically used as like a customer feedback form. So hand, hand the, the device to the customer, was the engineer on time, were they polite, professional? Cool, just looking at, at timing, I think we've we've got about seven minutes left. Um, so I'll, I'll skip through this quite quickly. Um, you can add, the third and final part is around adding attachments, files, images, both to your jobs and to your customers. Uh, obviously, it allows you to store information easily, keep it readily available and to hand. Uh, you can add information in the office or your engineers can add images, documents when they're out in the field. Uh, you can also see by adding information to jobs, your engineers can see the history. So if they're at a site, they can see what was done previously. And it just means it's easier to find information rather than having to look through WhatsApp, emails, or different, different colleagues' uh, computers. Um, you can add documents to a job. So you can add them both when you're in the office. And there's a couple of uh, different ways to do that. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because most customers, I think they find this um, quite easy. Um, you can add documents from the three dots menu or from when from within the job. Um, you can also add, your engineers can also add documents when they're out in the field. Um, and again, 
I'll, I'll go through this quite quickly. Um, the steps are here if you need them. Uh, there's help and support as well on the, on the website. You can also copy, copy jobs and ensure the attachments are included on, on a new job, which is useful if you're doing recurring jobs, when you always have, for example, a RAMS document. Um, and again, you can do that from the web and from the, the mobile devices. Um, and the bit where, where customers might not know um, is you can also add documents to your own customers, to your subcontractors uh, and to your employees. So I'll spend a bit of time on, on this to do that. So if you click the connections icon uh, towards the, the top right of the screen, choose your customers, uh, subcontractors and employees. And then if you click on, on the quick links, so if you click on documents, you can view any documents you've added for the customer and add documents there. Likewise for subcontractors, same route, click the contractors tab and then you've got the documents quick link there. And for the employees as well, again, you can view documents and add documents. Cool, so I think we've just got four minutes remaining. So just quick wrap, quick recap, we talked about how to build your network on Okapi and why you would build your network. We talked about adding and editing your own templates and then a bit of a rush, but we talked about adding files both to your job and also to your customers and subcontractors and employees. I think we've got four minutes left, so I'm just going to see if we've got any uh, messages in the chat. Um, so I've got a question here about can I add logos onto templates? Uh, yes, yeah, you can add logos into the headers and the footers. Um, so that's PNGs or JPEGs. You can add titles, subtitles as well. So yeah, you can really um, tailor the, the template to your specific needs. Um, another question I've got around, how does the system differentiate between employees and subcontractors? So it's, it's very similar in terms of how how the system works so you can manage subcontractors just as easily as you can manage employees uh, the idea is you can assign a job to an employee or a subcontractor and they both receive the jobs on their phone they can update the job and you can see in real time uh, what's going on so whether it's done by an employee or a subcontractor there's not much difference uh, conceptually though a subcontractor in Okapi, it's typically a company. I mean, it, there might only be one employee within that company, but there, there can be multiple. Um, and that's where the kind of the, the differences come in. So if you think of the, the radar screen, that shows the location of an individual. Um, so that shows your employees. It doesn't show the location of, of subcontractors. Uh, likewise, subcontractors have to accept the invitation before you can assign jobs to them. Um, and there's, there's, there's some small kind of differences um, because of that. Um, we do have the help and support page on which details out um, all the kind of differences. Um, let me find, and I've got the links on here as well if you need them. I think we've, it's gonna cut out in a minute, but um, I've got a few other questions I didn't get to, so I'll, I'll come back to you after this event. Um, we'll send out a, um, a link to our next event. We're going to be talking about invoicing, how to get your invoices paid quicker. I think that's on the, the 19th of May. Um, but we welcome your feedback. We'll send out a survey as well. Um, look forward to hearing your comments uh, about how you found the webinar, um, things you'd like us to, to discuss on future, future webinars. Um, and obviously, if you do want the, the slides, if you do want the video, uh, or if you have any other questions, then yes, yeah, send them through to us. Cool. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming today. We hope you found it useful. It was a 
bit of a, a rush through in certain areas. Um, but yeah, yeah, the slides and, and the video are available after if you if you want them. Um, otherwise, yeah, have a look on our support slide. There's lots of um, articles there. Um, there's lots of videos, uh, quick explainer videos to take you through different aspects of the system. Uh, and connect with us on Twitter, LinkedIn. We publish information on there as well. So yeah, look forward to, to speaking to people. So again, yeah, hopefully you find that useful. Thanks for attending and we look forward to seeing you in the next one uh, next month. Thank you.